Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fate, the Rise of Madness. Fate. Session 36, Contracts and Contraband, Part 2. I guess this is like Section 2 or whatever. <clears throat> part 2, Part 2. <laughs> the Steamrollers, because we don't have a name, a more official name for you guys yet, other than what Eisenschmidt has called you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's how you get nicknames. It's true. Bards bards give them to you. And then they're <laughs> yours forever. <laughs> wow. uh, but the group has decided during the break, and I believe you all heard it perhaps, uh, before the conversation turned to Minecraft, uh, <laughs> but they decided to head back to Adoja to... <clears throat> the Karaki family skyscraper to return the uh, very large sum of money that was recovered. Because you're right. It is scary carrying around that much money. Probably feels a little bit like those guys that have to like carry uh, you know amazing, the bank jobs amazing comic number one to conventions and stuff or whatever you know there's like, oh, like ridiculously priceless oh yeah comics. <clears throat> is there any final business in Sartak City before you begin your journey southwest? Should we stock up on anything, guys? Like, potion-wise? I can't think of anything right off. Yeah, it's like you a must-have. You did get lots of food from the cultist camp. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Um, I want to make sure Quetzal has all his uh, hot pockets and pies and all that <laughs> bullshit he usually makes. You'll have some time to make all that, so yeah, we'll 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 say that for purposes of this, that there will definitely be sufficient downtime on the ship to make however many of those he wants to make for the monies. The duh monies. I found a really good way to track my luck points, by the way. Really? If uh, you can see my character sheet, but like, I have both charts down on the right side. Mm -hmm. And I have the different beats. Uh, I didn't catch some of that. Your, your thing's doing it again. Uh, oh, beep boop. <laughs> beep boop beep. <laughs> beep boop. <laughs> Okay, so that again. So you have... Uh, uh, my character sheet's just really organized now. I have okay. both the charts, the random aid chart and the will of the wild chart on the sheet now. Good. Uh, all the different luck traits and chances and... Great. Luck. Uh, it's great. If In case you guys ever need to play as my character, you can. On, on roll 20? Yeah, on roll 20. Nice. <clears throat> good. Good, good, good. With your provisions acquired and everything ready to go, the money tucked away safely in the storage lockup on the ship, <clears throat> you begin your journey southwest. This will take on the ship or rather with the ship I would say probably we'll say six days oh this is important too and I think realistically the only one of you that could have participated in this was Krishna yeah uh, 
you're at this particular time of the year is a sort of holiday known as Technos Ascending, which is where they would typically basically give or, or send a portion of, of all their sort of collected Technos back into the veil. But uh, it's sort of the last day that, like, the last day of it is when you are picking up the dragon armor. So, like, during the night, because you had been there for a day or two prior to picking up the armor, during the night you see sort of flashes of magic throughout the city as, as wizards and sorcerers and other sorts of casters mm -hmm. you know submit so send magic back into the veil why do they do that? it's to restore the rebalance of the veil in case there's any craziness can, can they, so they can detect the state of the balance of the veil? Yeah, of, of a sort. So in this case, so typically, it wouldn't be quite as big of a light show because they would just be sending it into the sort of invisible veil. At least in, it's at, at least invisible to the material plane. But in this case, because of the because of what the Cult of Madness has been doing, the Veil has an abundance of it. So what they're doing is um, pulling a Technos from the Veil in this case. So basically, it depends on at that time of the year whether it's sort of high or low. And if it's low, then they'll put in. If, there's, if it's high, then they'll pull Technos out. Uh, Wouldn't that piss off the veil, the uh, cult of madness? Oh yeah, but there's no way that they could stop it because it's it's all across Arton that it happens. It's not just Pyderan or Sartex City. Or... Well, why would if they could just do that then then why would the cult of madness be doing the build up at all if they knew that? Well, because. The, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, the reason that they're continuously working on doing this is twofold. Number one, this is kind of as, as far as your sort of thought process can, can bring you as a non mag Like, you use holy magic, and then you've just recently, relatively recently, started using the sort of arcane variety. Uh, so you yeah. have some working knowledge of this, but it is it's twofold. Number one, the slaying of monsters increases the strength of the cult because the cult members are getting XP and fun stuff like that. Right, right. Getting stronger, getting better at fighting, getting etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's sort of the that that that's a big one. It's probably as far getting as funded get, as well. Yeah. Probably not the primary reason. But it is a sort of nice bonus. <clears throat> but a couple of things. Number one, the, the process of pulling Technos from the veil and the method that it takes place during Technos ascending is uh, its not super fast. So pulling it in, well, like putting some in or taking it out, it's not a very fast process. And they, they have an easier time of it during this, this particular four-day window because the sort of threshold of the veil during this time is a little bit weaker or thinner 
not really weak. Is the veil is the veil uh like like the force? So it's throughout the universe, or is it global, or or is it like a river where there are stronger points in parts of the globe? So it's more. I I would I would quantify it more as the force, in that it's it's everywhere. Because uh. like, Technos isn't everything. The veil is also kind of a separate plane. Yeah. Similar to the ethereal plane. So it does have, like, there are veil-based creatures that exist. <clears throat> um, but like a river, there are locations where that sort of threshold is weaker and or stronger depending upon where you are. <clears throat> example Sartak City is is likely where it is because the like a accessing the veil is a little easy there so the sort of connection is a little bit stronger there they can they can draw magic a little easier in general uh, and of course even more so during Technos ascending and there are places at least you you would assume you you never necessarily been to one yet but there are places there are likely places that have that were built in places where magic is weaker because that group does, doesn't like magic or what have you <coughs> so yeah more info for you. Info for the books. That too. Uh, so, mm -hmm. it's true that the time frame of Technos Ascending does slow them down a bit. But it, it doesn't ultimately. Because they have lots of time to do this. And Technos Ascending is only four days mm -hmm. out of the year. Yeah. So, like, the, the, the processes that the, that the University of Magi use to <coughs> draw Technos, to refine Technos for casting, it works during other times of the year because they have to continuously do that for casting the magic, but it's, it's just uh, sort of amplified during this time so there is it's it's a fight against balance essentially and with the cult of Mandos growing continuing to pay well and promise of adventure blah 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 they are becoming much more of a threat more as more and more time Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> I like to keep all these variables straight, so if they yeah uh, become relevant at some point. No, I, I understand completely. It's a lot to keep in in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I I know this. I know this very very well. still the same month by the time you get to a doja but before you get to a doja there are six days of travel now in general there aren't a lot of things that you'll see flying through the air that are either a threat to the ship or to you just by the nature of it's typically just birds that you find flying around you might 
it, depending on how high you're flying, you might hit a few galls as, as you get closer to the to the coast. But cause, out of the way, pick. Because <clears throat> I, uh, I call at them. Gulls so aren't. Yeah. Because, yeah. Go, go, motherfucker. <laughs> well, I'd have to say run away, so I start yelling run away at them. <laughs> That's Genius. hilarious. It's like a horn. Run and away! That <laughs> would work if they could speak avian, but they do not because they're dumb birds. <laughs> ah. uh, but you caught them anyway. Some of them respond with similar sounding cause, but beyond that, they don't. They tend to just ignore you. Or oh, you know. tell them to fuck off! I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, birds! <laughs> fuck up, bird, bird robot! Get out of here! <laughs> this, of course, has been very beneficial to travel via skyship. Mm -hmm. Because you avoid lots of things that you can look down and see on the roadway. Yeah. Nothing too ridiculous. You see like a small group of goblins here and there. Just traveling. Uh, I say goblins. Goblins aren't mm -hmm. necessarily like roving bandits all the time. Uh, but you do see like a family of goblins down the, like walking down the road in a cart. Some, some, some are riding in a cart has very fancy uh, metal working uh, doodads in it. Probably one of the goblin craftsman families. Uh, you do see at one point on the road, I'm assuming that you guys aren't flying absurdly high in the air. You could be. What's, what's, your, what's your flight pattern here? Um, that would be Krishna's call because he's in command. Oh uh, yeah. Ship. Well, first we need to return the loot. Right, but like in terms of on the journey to like what direction? Doja, you know what direction to go because you have the sort of holographic map that you can kind of pinpoint right. where you're going, and it'll get you there. But like, what elevation are you flying at? Are you flying very high? Oh. Are you flying like above uh, the clouds? Well, I actually, just our, our our standard height of out of range of any spells. Okay, so like three hundred feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's that's completely reasonable. While you're on the ship, I would presume, unless you're below decks, you're wearing uh, your parachutes. Oh, of course. Because you never know, and uh, falling. 300 feet would be most unpleasant. <clears throat> That's why I need to know how to fly. I think like, that Krishna could probably survive it. I think I bought a ring of feather fall, though. Some shit like that. Oh, I'll have to look. I, mean, I, I don't recall. I think you did, too, but we shall see. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Nothing really overly threatening. You don't see any kind of crazy... Uh, nothing like flying in to attack you. Nothing <coughs> invisibly damaging the ship. Nothing uh, Nothing seems awry on, on your journey there. Which is very nice, actually. Uh, you get a nice peaceful, some peaceful downtime on the ship. You can enjoy the the cool breeze as you zip down the z zip across the land. I put a wig on so I can feel the wind in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I pull it out of my my oh stomach. My gosh, is this <laughs> is this uh, is this part of the uh, Ashless Chap Squirrel costume ensemble? Oh, no, this is by itself. It's universal. Okay. Gotcha. So you put the wig on, and it sort of blows. It's very strange looking to everyone else. <laughs> oh, yeah. It doesn't look right. 
it does not it look looks, right. It looks very out of place and weird. Uh -huh. As you can tell, by the time you get, or rather, by the time you, you get to a point where you can see a doja, this would be on day six uh, of, of the travel from Sartak City. You <clears throat> see that there does not appear to be any visual signs of damage in the city. So like the building, none, none of the glass is anywhere to be seen. It's all put back in. It looks very pristine. Like they were quick, fast on the repairs. Well, you've been gone for a long time too, so that's they, true. They had, they've had several weeks to fix all this up, and you know, to us, a couple of weeks is like really to fix a skyscraper that got blown all to hell. But you know, we don't have magic. <laughs> That is true. Magic makes repairs and fixing damage much, much faster. Similarly with building things, but I digress. You reach a doja, you reach the outskirts, and there is temporary confusion and distrust. And you see a big ship, a big flying ship, no less, arrive from overland. And they can't, at first they can't see anyone, but once they notice who's in it or on it, then it becomes... We, we need a symbol. Yeah, it becomes far less crazy. That's not a bad idea, to have a symbol. Like a crazy. I got it. I know exactly what it is here. I'll put it in Discord. Okay. There's like a, a shield that inside of it, there's like a, a steamroller. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What did you do? It's a it. Jolly Roger. <laughs> Where is oh. it? It's in Discord. It's in Discord. General chat? Uh, yeah. yes. Game, yeah. No, the game chat, game channel. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. I don't know that that would be, uh, super It screams well friendly. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, the skull is smiling, obviously. <laughs> the, 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 the Jolly Roger is certainly, uh, <laughs> not well received by most will wave as well. <laughs> but maybe you yeah. can customize it like some of the ridiculous designs in Oh uh, yeah, in, in I, I can think piece. of something. Yeah. <clears throat> Cuz one piece has lots of different variations on the Jolly Roger that are absolutely insane. Of course. Really? That should, oh. That should makes no sense half the time anyway. Yeah, but say I I'm losing track, but it's good. I'm not losing track. Where floaties. <laughs> Luffy just needs to invent the life jacket. They're not they're not bright ship people. <clears throat> but again, not really relevant. <laughs> Cassandra. Is that right? That's 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 Kane's mother's name, right? Cassandra? Uh yes, Cassandra. Yes. For expedience sake. We'll sort of fast forward a bit. You are introduced. Uh, you sort of call out to the guards who are uh, initially suspicious, but once they see Kane, everything's fine. Oh, I'm probably not going to go in to see my family. By the way. Oh. You're just going to. I'll probably. Okay. I mean, I'll probably like go with them that far. Just to like get. And. Here. Yeah, I like to get in and everything, but I'm not actually going to go in to see see anybody because of guilt reasons. Gotcha. That makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. So, <clears throat> go to the ship. K 
Cain gets you through the gates. You straight, uh, how are you, who, what's the plan here? You're like, at the gates. The guards have said, okay, you can come in whenever you, or like, at, at, at your leisure. Like, what's the process here? You're taking the ship all the way over to... We should uh, park the ship and approach from a distance. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like the ship being seen very much at all. I'd like to keep it as secret and safe as much as possible. Okay. Yeah, are keep it going, keep it away. Are you going to Move leave? That. Like, are you going to take the money out of the storage room first? Before you uh, scoot closer to your mic. Yes. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, are you going to go to the storage on the ship and take the money out? before you shrink it down yeah of course we'll, we'll, we'll do that okay. uh, we'll land about a mile outside of town um grab the loot and then shrink the ship all right very good very yep. very good <clears throat> surprisingly again with your heightened senses and sort of paranoia you would think Oh no, they're gonna. This is like a prime moment to ambush to take the money back. But there does not seem to be any Cult of Badness members or anything, anything of the sort around. You don't see any anyone like that. Uh, it is quite. This is fairly obvious to most of you. Uh, I, I would venture to say all of you. But the city of Adoja will not suffer the presence of any Cult of Madness members at this point. For very obvious, you know, you stole almost all of our money kind of reasons. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So you're in the clear, this close to the city, for sure. You unload everything. You begin walking into the city with the ship safely with Clank in his in one of his hidden compartments. Is that right? Is that how that yep. plays out? Yep. Okay. Uh, and as you're walking into the city and heading toward the Karaki Corporation building, you turn to talk, to like ask Kane a question, but he's not there. He has stealthed away at some point between where you are and the front gate. Where oh, are, sneaky. Where are you going, Kane? Um, I don't have a specific place in mind. I'm probably thinking more... Um, okay, I won't say an actual, like, location, but, like, an, the idea of a location. Um, so whenever I was younger and, like, I had the whole, like, bad stuff happen to me after like he got cursed or whatever yeah so i'll we'll we'll say there was some location like maybe like down by the docks or something like that that he would go to just like just to kind of be like all moody or whatever <laughs> like a you you have a like a place like, spot yes uh, like that he went to a lot okay. when he was younger like, like, and like probably have it standing on a gargoyle. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So, just down, like, yeah, we'll say it's down, down by the, the port. Is this a place somewhere. that is challenging to get to? Um. Or is it like probably like uh, we'll probably say it's a little bit challenging, but not too bad because again, uh, if it was enough to where a child could have got up there to it. Yeah, well, I guess it probably true. wasn't probably wasn't that awful, but at the same time, he definitely was a more dexterous 
child to begin with. Mm, indeed. So, place that most people aren't going to be able to get to, but it wouldn't be that challenging for, say, like the other people in the in the party to be able to get to as well. Right. If that makes sense. It does. It absolutely does. So maybe yeah. like on on top of like like a warehouse or something like that. Yeah. In, Somewhere in the shadows. You gotta have a mask when you do this stuff, right? Do you have a mask? I have a hood. A hood? There you go. I have a cloak. Yeah. Can we just pull the hood up? He does. You the, just can't. Uh, you gotta do that. Yeah. He does the. Uh, when he walks through cow crowds, he does the the Altair like. <laughs> touch everyone on the way through just like to yeah scoot him out of the way <laughs> um that's great that's great so you find yourself in your because you're just you had no intention of seeing your family at this point even though you knew the money had to be returned and in your sort of just sneaking through the city, streets you're very familiar with, um, you may not even have intentionally made it here. Sort of like muscle memory took you to right. to this place, this place of uh, of quiet contemplation. Um, and you sort of sit um, let's see what would this be we'll say that it's like a warehouse at the yeah. at the docks uh, and you it takes it takes a little bit of a climb but it's not anything that like you said, a child couldn't do. Um, and there's like a secret. Like, it's almost like a like they started to build a ventilation uh, shelf up there, but they never quite finished it. And it's basically just like a, a little platform that looks out onto the ocean. So it's very, it's very peaceful, very quiet. Other than the sound of the docks below, uh, it's it's very free of conversation, we'll say. Yep, good good place to just go sit and think and brood, as as it is currently with with Kane's state of mind. Uh, and we'll get back to Kane in a little bit. Everyone else, Krishna, Quetzal, and Clank. Wow, we're down to four. That's wild. Uh, that's pretty crazy. You continue your way through the city. There's that brief pause where you notice that Kane is gone, but with the idea of bringing the money back very, very top on the mine, I would imagine that you don't waste or spend too much time right. trying to find him. Number one, because you know he is very stealthy and you won't be able to find him if he, if he doesn't want to be found. Uh, number two, it's just... you. You got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. <clears throat> yes, yes. So you come back. You come to, and at this point, on day six, it's probably around three or so in the afternoon. So it's, it's still pretty warm out. The sun's reasonably high still. Uh, it is... Uh, it's this is fall time, I believe, at this point, mm -hmm. in 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 the calendar. So it's got some nice 
orange leaves and stuff like that. It's a very pretty walk through town. But you find your way back to the Karaki Corporation, and the receptionist greets you. She is a... <clears throat> oh, gosh. Sorry. Oh, God. That's noisy. This is it, big, uh, Elizabeth. The big one. <laughs> She is a halfling. Dressed in very nice uh, formal wear. The kind you would see at, say, a uh, five star hotel kind of thing. All right. She says. Because you, you've never met this this woman before uh, at all. She doesn't know you either. She says, with a nice warm smile, how can I help you today? Welcome to the Crocky Corporation. Uh, what, what is, uh, are you here to see someone? Uh, well, shit, what's her name? She has not given you a name. Cassandra. Cassandra. Yeah, Cass we're here to see Cassandra. Oh, you're talking about the person you're there to see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Not the receptionist. <laughs> no, I don't care who her name is. Be gone. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, fair enough. Uh, Cassandra, and your your business with Lady Cassandra. Returning. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have a delivery. Oh. Uh Excellent. Typically, delivery is in the back. It's one she requested us to get, personally. Oh. Is, oh, okay. Uh, I Just will... let her know that the steamrollers are right here. The steam. Oh. The group that Hector is with. Traveling with. Uh, I turn around to the group. <laughs> I'm like, does she not hear me? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, what? Uh. Is, who's Hector? <laughs> uh, you you would you would know him as uh, Kane. Ah, Hector. Oh, Hector. Oh, Hector. Yes. <laughs> yes, I will relay this information uh, if you'll. She kind of motions to uh, some very, very uh, fancy, sort of very comfortable looking chairs in the sort of foyer area, lobby, if you will. Uh, if, if you'll wait here, I will relay this information. And uh, I'm not sure 100% where she is at this moment, but I will find out. And uh, we'll, we'll see. Okay. Uh, we will wait. <laughs> and she okay. she pulls out. Wait, can I sense motive? <sighs> yeah. All right. That would be an insight check. Insight. Yes. There's no sense motive in five e. <laughs> ah, not <nat> twenty. Nice. <laughs> First roll of the night. Oh. It has been, hasn't it? Role playing like a boss. Okay. <clears throat> she appears to be on the up and up doesn't seem to be like shifty or nefarious in any sort of way I say pitter patter and pitter -patter? <laughs> shoo her away go pitter patter it's from Litter Kenny it's something Ryan's been watching and she's been quoting it like crazy Oh, I have... it means hurry up <laughs> I see. Go get her. <laughs> you see her uh, reach over to a. It's a. It looks. It just looks like a uh, stone. A stone tablet. It's like a slab of stone, but it has these little circular runes on them. Maybe twenty or so. <clears throat> and she uh, she kind of looks at it for a second and taps one and 
you hear her, her say, uh, there's a group of people, uh, the, the steamrollers, here to see Cassandra. And there's another voice that comes out that is, because you all met Cassandra, uh, but this is not her voice. It is a, it is a, a it, 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 it is a feminine voice, but it's not, uh, it's not Cassandra's. In fact, you recognize it as uh, Kane's older sister. Oh, okay. <clears throat> whose name escapes me at this very moment. Oh, gosh. Uh, but <clears throat> sort of the older sister. And... Oh, man, that's going to bother me. I should yeah. probably know my sister's name. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> you absolutely should. Where is that? I know I have it here somewhere. <laughs> First son, Orion, eldest daughter, Leto. Leto's the younger one. Oh wait, no. Leto, Leto is the oldest daughter. Yes. Yeah. And then um. The younger one is. I'm pulling it up. I don't have it actually written down on any of my actual <clears throat> papers. I just have it on the word file. Uh, Althea. Althea, that's right. The Rose Thea. of yeah. Adoja. Yeah, she's, right. she wouldn't be responding to any of that. But it is Leto. She says, and you can kind of hear it because it's just like a, it's like a speakerphone kind of thing. <clears throat> she says, well, uh, Cassandra is quite uh, indisposed at the moment, but I would be happy to speak with them. Is, is my brother with them? And of course the receptionist uh, says uh, no not that I can see but he if I recall correctly was very uh, quiet so maybe he's here I'm not sure she says eh, yeah that's 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 fair okay uh, please send them out Maybe some of you have sat down. Maybe you haven't. You probably just been. <laughs> no, I've, I actually watched her take that yeah. call. I just looked directly at her. No. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's staring at her. That's how we do what she was saying. <laughs> uh, how we do. You see her climb down from the chair that she's in, and it's actually like a smaller chair that's been set on top of a bigger chair. So as you can see over the front desk. And uh, she, she kind of walks out from back there and sort of motions you, motions you all toward the elevator. <coughs> and says, here, here is, uh, you know, just take this up to the 65th floor. No, wait, how many floors are there in this? Sure, we'll say 65th floor, <coughs> why not? It's a big building. <coughs> and uh, her her office is the first one on the right. <coughs> okay? Uh, yeah, sixth, what, what number floor? 65th, please. And uh, I don't remember how big this building is. It's like the Shinra building. Yeah, but I can't remember how big it is. It's, it's all good. She tells you the floor, and you go up. Uh, she says, before you leave, of course, she says, um, there will be, there's like a coffee and some other uh, sort of light uh, cookies and things uh, to the left of when you step out of the elevator, in case if any of you would like a little uh, snack before you go to the meeting. Okay? Hmm. 
have okay uh, have a great uh, have a great time i guess and but, I'll, what I'll what is your already. name what what is her name well give me a second i'll tell you wow oh. just in case she's evil i mean i trust her <laughs> just, in, <laughs> just in case she's a cursor and she isn't saying okay the the way i don't like it <laughs> uh, okay so let's see where's my good numbers i have a very nice handy oh that's fun uh my name is violet i look her up or down i'm like all right violet <laughs> She's a little what is she? She's a halfling. I yeah. <laughs> you don't have to Be look boo. very far to to get up and down. <laughs> I just like down and then a little bit further down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's very tiny. She's a little bit less than three feet tall. Mm, but even. But here's the thing. <laughs> she's not that much shorter than you. It's true. Because I'm growing you, size. You, <laughs> you're, I, you're, you're about I, I seven grow inches. A giant, <laughs> like nine feet. Yeah, that's true. I, I've actually, I'm 12 you inches. Grow, not a shower. You're I'm 12. You are about, at your default size, you're about three and a half feet tall. So you've got about six to eight inches on her in terms of height. I'm always enlarged, all right? Constantly in public. <laughs> Large than sure. charge. Yep. Well, probably not. Just on account <laughs> of uh, like getting through doors and stuff. To yeah, you're dance. probably right. God damn it! I still look up and down. So, and that's fine. I mean, you you, you do, and she's she smiles at you warmly, uh, and then turns and returns to her desk. To continue filling out whatever new paperwork or whatever she was doing there. And you are at the elevator and you are free to move up to wherever that is. Ah, it's got an X on it. I can figure it out. Let me just click something else. <laughs> I'm trying to find what this uh, what level this is on. It's just gonna aggravate me until I do. Mm, nope. First thing is gonna send the players up. Blah blah blah. It's 400 feet tall, there wouldn't be 65 floors. So let's say it's more like 35. The 35th floor. That's more like it. Anyway, I digress. The elevator stand sits before you. Do you take it up? Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. <clears throat> you make your way up, uh, and of course the doors open, and you're in a similar, very similar looking floor, almost to the point that you you think maybe you didn't go up until you look out the window and see that you don't really see the ground until you're pretty far out. Uh, mm -hmm. The smell is actually very inviting in terms of the snacks on the left-hand side. Uh, there's coffee and tea and 
various juices and such. There's like bread, sort of crusty bread, cookies, some fruit, etc. Again, love love like, me some crusty bread. Yeah, I like French bread. It's like mostly crust, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm a robot. I just crush them to my face. <laughs> Crunchier the better. <laughs> <laughs> just like the feel of the crunchy bread. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some, mm, this is some mm. very crunchy bread. Guys, so, I am getting so like, full right now. Dude, <laughs> so weird. Oh, love it. very funny image of to see just like a little three and a half <laughs> tall robot man just like <coughs> smashing hard bread into his face it's, delicious it's like crumbs are falling down into the like lush carpet <laughs> it's very funny um but you are you you can see that her office door Number one is labeled Leto Kuraki. And number two is open. So you can kind of just walk in or knock or what have you. I, uh, around the door. Yeah, we don't want a cop knock. <laughs> right. Nope. Come in. Come in. We go in. Are... We leave the door slightly cracked. Yeah. There are a number of soft, cushioned couches and things in this area. There's a large wooden desk that has a lot of paperwork on it. And at a cursory glance, without being too uh, sort of overtly snoopy, you do find or do see that mm -hmm. it is predominantly uh, economic paperwork. The business of money and products and all the various things that they're doing. <clears throat> she motions for you to sit. As she finishes signing a few papers. And what she does is she kind of rolls, she rolls a few of them up that she has been making notes on. And she walks over to uh, the, the far side window. And you didn't notice it at first, but kind of off to the left when you walk in. There are these series of uh, glass cylinders. And she opens one up and puts some paper in it and closes it. And the, and the paper, like, shoots down somewhere. It goes somewhere. <laughs> she turns returns to her seat and looks to you all and says ha, uh, it's been a little bit of time I hope that your search has been going well Gerald. Oh, I'm sorry, one second. Um, so I, I guess that you have uh, been successful in your contract? Uh, we got a portion of it. Okay. 
portion is good. What For is, now. What is a we still... portion of it? Uh, we have... 350 black draka on us and then a bunch of others some blue some green okay wait so black you... is the yeah, oh, yeah yeah we have a shit ton but black draka is the lowest coin <laughs> we have 350 so, so, black draka so she was like and she's like oh okay that's not very much she's like uh <laughs> that's like three dollars and fifty cents they they spent all of it. Sorry. <laughs> three it was, and I turned and looked. We found a briefcase full of IOUs. Yeah. So <laughs> was, we have seventy-two blue Draka. <laughs> there we go. That is much better to her ears, of course. Uh, <laughs> she's like she says. Good. That's more than half of what was taken. Uh, yep. That's fantastic. Really, I, I can't imagine that you have found or that you'll be able to find much more than that. I have a feeling they've spent that quantity of remainder. You might find more, and if you do, fantastic. Um, but we will gladly take in that, what what you've recovered, and of course give you the payout for it. And if you happen upon any more Faraki funds from that theft, of course, we will <coughs> reward you similarly. 1% of the recovered coin. All right, so I'm going to get rid of all the money that we have for this mission and <laughs> add 75 k to our party fund. Sound good? And and then, what? How much is it? How much did we get for the one percent of the thirty-two, uh, the seventy-two blue draka? And okay, you said it's one percent, right? Yeah. So your total. All right. So I have, so... I have it here. All right. Your total payout would be seventy-two thousand eight hundred and fourteen white draka. So whether you put that in the party fund or divvy it out to everyone is up to you. All right, I'll split it separate for now. Okay. And uh, one more time, 17,814. And 14, all right. I think it would probably be, um, how are you doing on personal money, Clank? I have, he told you, 200 white draka. Yeah. Clank, <laughs> Clank has been spending a lot of cash. How, how about um, uh, uh, Kane? How are you doing doing on personal funds? Oh, let's see. He's not there right at this moment, but you can. I the I mean, I can. Well, can okay. So, how this. many people in total? There's so us three, and then two more. So oh, divided by five. I think I. I was sitting on twenty four hundred. Okay, so uh, I, was... I think it'd be a good time to to divvy this up amongst us because the party funds is pretty fat at the moment. Yeah, that's you're right. true. That's very true. Okay, so I'll divide it by five, and then that's what we'll have all uh, each. There you go. There all right. You go. That'll be a pretty good chunk of change for everybody. Uh, five. Uh, fourteen thousand five hundred sixty-two. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, point eight. <laughs> and Go ahead and round it up. And eight red draka. <laughs> red draka. Ah. Um. We will call. There's okay. So there's one more thing that's going to happen, and then we'll call it here because it's getting a little late. I know some of you have work tomorrow. Fine. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll switch back over to Kane. <coughs> as you're, as like, so the scene shifts at like right, right when uh, Clank and 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 the group 
just like put several gigantic bags of coin on her desk. <coughs> it's going to kind of cut away to Kane, who is brooding at his favorite brooding spot. Mm-hmm. When you hear a sound coming from behind you the path uh, seemingly on the same path that you took to get up here and it doesn't sound like it's it sounds like someone who's trying to be quiet but isn't very good at it so it's so it's clearly not someone who's like an assassin or anything like that okay um I'm going to I'll go ahead and sort of like roundabout like do a like a fairly advanced like maneuver like maybe like drop off the side a little bit and like shimmy around yeah to try to come up behind them okay if, if they're clearly not as ex- experienced in stealth that's true okay that's easy enough give me a self check real quick So that's a 29. 29? Hey. That's, that's crazy town. <laughs> uh, roll, rolled an 18. <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah, you you easily shimmy down and sort of skirt around and are very well hidden when this figure uh, crawls up into view and sits quietly to look out at the sea uh, and it is Althea um your flighty seemingly anyway flighty uh, younger sister sister bop 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 I mean, she, she's so, she's she's dressed well still. Like it's not like she's dressed like an assassin or anything. She's in like a right shorter dress that she can climb. But she mm-hmm. she sits down. And uh, do do you approach, or? Um, I'll st- come from beh- stand from behind her and just and just say out loud, "You never w- were good at being sneaky." <laughs> she 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 like she jumps at that and says uh, uh, you scared me Hector what are you doing up here Althea well why don't you have a seat and I'll tell you all about it and that's where we'll end it oh drama so wah, wah, wah. we will uh <laughs> That's that's a great place to stop it, I think. On a, on a cliffhanger. And uh, so we'll be back in two weeks. And uh, all right, let's see. Two weeks, the nineteenth. Yep, sounds good. Nineteenth. All right. All right, guys. Uh, you have fun. Whatever you're doing. All right. Later. Later. Peace. Later, guys. Later.